So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create this AI animation effect instead of After Effects in Photoshop. And if you wanted to, you could use Premiere Pro instead of After Effects. The only real big difference is the timeline and all you're really doing is just adding in different images. So it really doesn't even matter what software you're using. You just need to be able to drag in like images over your layer. But as long as you have some type of footage that you can go ahead and use and you're pretty much set. So the first thing I'm gonna do is scrub through this clip here and probably set a marker around here for where I want the effect to start at. So if you right click your layer and then go to markers and add marker, it'll add a marker right here. And this is where our first frame will start. And we basically just wanna export each of these frames for the next maybe like five or whatever. I'd say a minimum of five frames would be good for this effect. You can do more than that depending on how long you want this animation to last for. And how I'm going to be exporting each frame is actually by using a plugin called FX Console. And this plugin is actually free from Video Copilot. So if you just go to their website or I'll have the link down in the description below. You can go ahead and find this plugin and it is for Windows or Mac. So go ahead and download that. It's super useful and honestly, not just for using it for this effect, as I'm going to be copying and pasting these uh, images, but you can use it to search up different effects. And when you type in the effect, it'll have everything just come up right here instead of having to go into the effects and presets. So it's a super handy plugin and I highly recommend using it. But if you just don't want to download that plugin, you can actually go up to composition and then go to save frame as and then click file. And then you can just save the frames here if you want to do it that way. But I just think this uh, plugin right here makes it super simple and easy. So once you have that plugin installed, let's go ahead and hit control and then the spacebar. Or if you're on Mac, I think it's like command spacebar. But if those keybinds are working, then you can go into the settings and change the shortcut here. I just have it on the control space here, but you can make it custom or whatever. But inside of here, let's just go ahead and hit this little camera icon. That's gonna take a screenshot. Then we wanna go here and hit copy to clipboard. So now inside of Photoshop, we can hit control V to paste our image. And I didn't really mention this, but you wanna make sure your Photoshop like layer is the same width as your After Effects composition. So in this case, it's 1920 by 1080. So you just wanna make sure you match that when you're setting it up. So there's our first frame. Let's go back into After Effects and go one frame over and doing the same thing copying to the clipboard, going back in here and pasting it. So we're basically just gonna do that a few more times. All right, so I went ahead and did this five different times. As you can see, I have five different layers here. And I guess you can go ahead and delete this background layer if you have that, but yeah, so we have these five different layers. And if I toggle them on and off, you can see that they're all different frames. Let's go ahead and toggle off all of these layers and just use our first layer, so layer one. And we can pretty much outline whatever we want. We can do like this wheel here, maybe like the light, or something, I don't know, you can kind of get pretty creative with this. You just want to make sure you're using one of the later versions of Photoshop that has the generative AI fill or whatever. So that's what I'm going to be using for this. So with that first layer selected, let's go into this lasso tool or I actually like to go in here and if you hold down left click, you can open up this little menu and we're just going to select the second one here. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and select the front of the car and see if AI can create something kind of cool. Not totally sure how this is gonna look. Um, it might just totally mess up, but and for the prompt, you wanna keep it pretty simple. So for this one, I'm gonna say replace the front of the car. Let's see how this turns out. All right, so as you can see, this is uh, not exactly what I was looking for. I don't even know what, what this is at all. So let's go ahead and change this prompt. Instead of saying replace, maybe change the front of the car. And we're gonna do like two white. So we're adding like a color in there. So now I have changed the front of the car to white. Um, hopefully that doesn't cause the whole entire front end to do that. But I mean, if you want that, that's kind of cool, but I don't know if I really am going for that style here. <laughs> All right, so we just got done processing and these are the new results. And honestly, this is pretty perfect. Like this is kind of what I was wanting. So when I toggle this on and off, you can see the before and after. And this is kind of the effect I'm going for is just a subtle little change, but and the animation is gonna look pretty sick. So now let's go ahead and toggle on our next layer, so layer two. And you wanna keep the like outline pretty consistent along every single frame. So you wanna just do pretty much the same outline here. You can have it a little bit different if you want. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use that same prompt. But instead of using white, I'm gonna actually do black and see if that changes the result. And let's just go ahead and hit generate. Okay, so we just got done processing and it came out with some pretty weird results here. I mean, I think it might be usable. This last one here might be, I guess, kind of cool. So let's just go ahead and save that one. Uh, we can always go back and change them if we want. Um, so moving on to layer four, we're just gonna go ahead and pretty much repeat this process. So I'll just see you guys once I'm done with the rest of the frames.
All right, so I just finished creating all of my different AI frames. So now over here, you can see all my different AI layers. We basically just wanna go ahead and merge each one together. So for this first layer, you wanna select this and then the one right above it, which is the um, AI layer. So select that, right click it and hit merge layers. Do that for the next one up, right click, merge layers. So yeah, you kind of get the idea. Just do that until you have all five or however many frames you have. Let's go ahead and rename these because we want to have them in order when we export them. So it's going to do one, one, two, three, and four. And if you don't know how to rename, you literally just like double click the text here and it opens up that little layer. And I guess I can't count because I was four layers and I thought I was doing five, but I mean, I, I guess that's fine. It doesn't really matter, but ideally you want to do more than four, like five or something, but I guess it's fine for this, but you kind of get the point. But anyways, once you have all of those uh, renamed, just go ahead and select all layers, right click it, go into export as, make sure you have all these layers selected. So just, I guess, click select all, then go to export. I'm just gonna export it into this folder. So select the folder you want, and then we can go back into After Effects here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drag all of these layers into a folder. So for my first one, let's just drag this onto that marker that we set uh, at the start of the video. And this is kind of up to you for how long you want each frame to last. So I think I'm just gonna have each frame last for around like four seconds. So let's go here, one, two, three, four. So that's good, let's just go ahead and put the next frame right next to that. Have that last for four seconds as well. And you basically just want to repeat this process with the rest of the frames. Now for your original footage, let's just go to the start of it and then go four frames over because that is how many frames we exported out. But if you exported like five frames or six, then you would kind of go here. And then you would split the layer and drag it all the way to the end. So right here. And that just makes it so it doesn't like jump at the end of the video. So that just makes the transition pretty seamless. As you can tell, if I didn't split that layer, it would have just jumped to like a different frame later on in the video, which isn't good. So that's why I cut the layer and just dragged it over to the end of our last, I guess, layer here. And there we go. That's pretty much how you create this effect. And to be honest, I probably wouldn't have used this frame right here or maybe the yellow one. I think they just kind of <laughs> look a little bit too off from a car and it kind of ruins the effect I was going for, but this was kind of just a tutorial and showing you guys how to do this. But obviously it's just gonna take time messing around with different AI like prompts and kind of seeing what one works best for you. So if I was selecting a wheel here, I would probably do like replace the wheel with something or whatever, I don't know. You'll just kind of have to mess around with that. But yeah, the last thing I like to do is just go ahead and pre-compose all these layers and then make it into one layer here on that very last frame, or actually just a few frames before that, I'm just gonna go ahead and add some shake to this. And I'm just gonna split these layers and add motion blur. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use my shake presets. Um, and you can go ahead and use these if you want, but like I always say, you can always just use whatever shakes you have. So uh, S underscore shake from Sapphire is a great one. I think it's like, yeah, right here, you can use that. You can use different shakes from uh, Red Giant Universe. But yeah, I just like using my presets. Um, they're just super simple and easy to use, to be honest and you don't really have to mess with anything. It's just drag and drop and you're pretty much done. So that's why I like using them. And there's a lot of different options here to choose from. So to use the effect, you just wanna make sure your playhead is at the start of your clip and then drag on the effect. So when I play it back, it just adds a little bit of like an impact to the effect. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this effect. Obviously this is pretty simple and you can get really creative with using this AI generated fill. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, then make sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel. Like I said earlier, if you wanna go ahead and download the shape presets I have, they'll be linked down in the description below. But yeah, with that being said, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.